We're just nine minutes into the, the, the late time, one o'clock, as 13 hours in Brazil. So we are just coming in, we are just uh, logging in, we are accepting. So we intend to use 30 minutes to, to wait for more the participants before we can start the program. Progress. Hello, Inca. Bowen, you Bowen, you come. Hello, 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 Inca. Yeah, Mumbo, you see. Hello, I have okay okay we totally we decided to uh, according to uh uh more issue where himself uh we needed to use 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. Can come in. okay. So that's why. Okay, no problem. The people are just coming in now, and people are logging in, and we are uh, accepting. People are logging in from every part of the world, you know. So if anybody wants to say anything before you can raise up your hand, then we can unmute you, and you can, before she wear himself, comes on board. Yeah. It's like uh, Mr. Adifio, you want to say something? Let me see. Mr. May. Where is Mr. Adifio? Okay. Mr. Adifio, you? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have uh, omitted myself. Okay. Yes. Uh, I want to say thank you to thank you to the organizer of this uh, forum. No I've been looking for a way to. Number one, uh, to have a place where I can have a contribution, where I can have a chat with Mr. With Mr. Omar Yelishu, right? Mm -hmm. I've sent him several messages. I'm in Abuja. I want to meet him in Abuja. I have not been able to see how I can get in touch with him. Several messages he has not replied. But I think maybe this will make it easy for me. Now, what I would like to say concerning the... State of the nation, please help me by it. Sorry, I just talked to somebody to do something. Uh, the stage we are in now, right. I want to say we need to, first and foremost, all of us to accept the responsibility that, that the state we are in Nigeria, we all contributed to it. I've come to know that a lot of people are exonerating themselves from the current situation in the country. As far as we're still saying we are not part, we won't be able to come out to do something about, you know, resolving the situation of things presently in Nigeria. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I, I would like you to introduce yourself and uh, let's go. Okay. okay, my name is Adifuye Felix. Okay. I am an accountant. I'm also a social entrepreneur. I, 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 I have an establishment where I train a lot of youths on uh, skills in order to make them 
employable and also to help them to be able to do well on their job. And they have been doing that for over 10 years. So I reside in Lagos, but because of my nature of job, I'm an, I'm an accountant. So I'm here in Abuja for audit. So maybe in about two weeks again, I should be returning back to my base in Lagos. So that's who I am. All right. So uh, and uh, also, I would like to say this on this platform that I'm, I'm also a card carry member of uh, AAC, uh, which is uh, the party funded by Shuhure himself. Mm -hmm. I voted for him in the last or just concluded election about three years ago. Okay. So, and uh, yeah. So, what I want to say, because I saw the caption for this meeting titled The State of the Nation. So we will we will have the opportunity. Uh, you have the opportunity to ask him as soon as around. I think we okay. we are yet to, to to start the program. You know, we are we start okay. to and uh, and start the program the, the normal way. I can understand okay, you. Sir. You have invited him to speak uh, with us to chat with us, so we can clear our our doubts. This is uh, Brazil. This, is, this program is courtesy of Nigerians in Brazil. The Higos, the Hausas, the Yorubas, every Nigerian in Brazil. We are contributing our part to what is happening in Nigeria. So we invited others. This time around, we are inviting Shure and uh, I'm Adin Kaolaya, an artist, I'm a journalist, I'm a writer. I'm a blogger. I live in Brazil. I'm the moderator and the coordinator. And with me is also uh, uh, Utman Dan Bakari, uh, a Nigerian, he's a writer, an administrator of English. He lives in Brazil. Uh, Lama Mata of uh, Shiwara himself, to the school together in the of Lagos. Without him and several others here, we won't be able to make this program uh, a success. He's here with us too. He's equally a moderator. I'd like you to, to all welcome him. You're uh, welcome. We have invited Shibore to speak with us in Brazil and the opportunity for everybody who wants to hear one or two things from you. But this is uh, a program for Nigerians in Brazil actually. And we will employ every member here or every participant to please respect the rules, the regulations. At least let's maintain respect, no abusive language. And uh, let's ask him questions that we know is relevant to the purpose. Uh, I would say Brazil, not, I won't say me, I, I will invite him alone. So, I can assure you that uh, according to him himself, he said, I'll be there to answer every question. So I can assure you, Mr. Felix Adifuyi, uh, that Shure uh, will listen to you, he will answer the question. And I will also use the opportunity to let you know that uh, uh, we have Nigeria in diaspora, as Naidua here, that's chapter two. Now, a big part of this uh, program, the African Cultural Center of uh, King Obadikin uh, Lani Romu. We have Edgar uh, Omudua, we have the OPC, we have the Boho, we have the, uh, the, the Enugu Association, Imo Association, and several others that have all contributed to making this program uh, a worthy event. So we are all with one mind. I want to hear from everybody, but please, let us put in place one thing, which is, you know, we are Nigerians first, then uh, Ududua, uh, uh, Biafra, or Arewa, or uh, that is just a follow-up, you know. So please, I want everybody here to just respect the, 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 the protocol so that we won't offend ourselves, you know. Thank you very much. Something, just raise your hand, then we, we unmute you. 
Mm, you can ask a question. All right. My wow. And Anne. Yeah, my name is Anne Obukoko. I'm based here in uh, Aurora, Colorado. Oh, thank you. When I look at what is happening in our country, it breaks my heart every blessed day. I know we have different tribes in Nigeria, okay? But I've come to one conclusion, in my own opinion, that we only have two tribes. Two tribes in Nigeria. The tribe of the oppressed and the tribe of the oppressors. So when I look at Nigeria as a whole, when we look at Ododua, when we look at the, the north, when we look at the middle bed, when we look at the east, we have the oppressed right there. And we also have the oppressors. So when we look at this volume or category of people in Nigeria, I will categorize our country right now that we only have two major tribes. The tribe of the oppressed and the tribe of the oppressors. And the oppressors, they fall into the different political parties. And when I look at the tribe of the oppressors, they have one thing in common. They come to the camp of the oppressed and they divide us with tribes, religions. But when we look at them deeply, we realize they marry themselves. They don't speak religion when they share and loot our money. They don't speak religion or tribe when they use our young ones as political thugs. And as they turn them to become ritualists and yahoo yahoo. They don't. But when it is time for election, they deceived us in the camp of the oppressed. They make us divide ourselves because they know the day we speak in one voice, just as we did in Lekki, and we stand to the end, their kingdom is crumbled, and we will rescue our destiny and the destiny of our young people and our born generation for them. But the question we will all ask ourselves today, how long are we going to be full? How long are we going to understand that the language on Ghana is neither you are Yoruba, Igbo, or Hausa, or the, rather we the oppressed, our destiny, and the destiny of our children, and the destiny of our born generation is already mortgaged in the altar of greed, selfishness, and what you call it. I am not waiting for 2023. It is either we join forces and join one voice and one mind to rescue our tomorrow. We will not get anywhere. Growing up, I was told Nigeria are the lead, children are the leaders of tomorrow. Nigeria go better. And I'm grown like this. Nigeria has not been better. Then I decided to go into memory lane to ask questions. I asked my father. Were you told in your days that Nigeria would be better and children are the leaders of tomorrow? He said yes. And I asked, was Nigeria better in your time? He said no. Was children the leaders of tomorrow? He said no. I said, did your father tell you the same thing? And he said yes. I said, did your father, father tell him the same thing? He said yes. I said, what was the story? He told me nothing was changed. Then I asked myself, will I go, am I going to leave? And that with that slogan for my children that Nigeria will be better and leaders of the, and leader will be the leaders of tomorrow. Then I said I will join fighting with people like Omoya Omo 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 to say no. Nigeria must be better in our time. Children must be leaders of tomorrow in our time. So that when we die tomorrow, we will leave something behind for our children to work upon to make Nigeria a better place. Apart from that. Akon is somebody admired so well. He was born in U.S. He's a citizen of U.S., but he never sees himself as a citizen of U.S., but he rather sees himself as a citizen of Senegal, where his blood originated from. Right now, he's raising what they call Akon City in, in Uganda, in Senegal. But the question to us, Nigeria, is this. 
They say we are the giant of Africa, but right now we are not even the giant of an ant, chocolate like of the giant of an Africa. When sent, when Econ succeed in raising that city to, to Econ City in Senegal, we will lose our position as the giant of Africa. So it is high time we throw away these are differences, come together in unity and take our destiny and rescue our country from the hands of the Ajegudu Gerald that has destroyed it. If not, if we don't do that, we will not be mocked only by the Western world, we will be mocked by our junior brothers and sisters, the other African continent that are looking up to us. So it is high time we wake up, my brother. It is high time we wake up, my sister. In unity, we can do this. And when you bring your strength and I bring my strength in one voice, in one unity, we will definitely take back our destiny, the destiny of our country from those places. How can we, our case is just like this when I look at Nigeria, a case of a person who is on a big sea of river and soap is entering his eye. And what do I mean? How can we be so blessed with everything Heaven can kick off, and yet we are the number one poor capital of the world. What an irony. How can Yoruba will say, uh, the person that is selling, uh, how can you see somebody selling clothes and his child is wearing Akisa? Akisa means rag. I'm not Yoruba, but I hear a little bit of Yoruba. You, we, we are so black, but we are poor. Your mother and father, our mother and father is selling clothes. But yet we wear Akisa. Akisa is right, if I understand that interpretation very well. So I believe in the cause of Una and Dikano, but I do not, I do not agree with his cursive and abusive words. I believe in the in the language of Omoyo Lecture, because justice and fairness must be for everybody. But his approach may not be your approach, but that does not mean. He was not speaking the language you and I believe for a fair nation. So it is time for all of us here to make up our mind. Everything we enjoy here is possible for us to put it back in Africa no, 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 or back home. So we won't do this and go back home. None of you want to be here. Personally, I am tired. I am tired of walking by armies in the snow. We have a good weather. We have everything there. But this security is the order of the day. Why? The children we, we refuse to take care of. The children we refuse to provide an avenue for them to make a legitimate means of living. They have become monsters to us. That some of us, when we travel home, we, we, we don't return. Why? Because those monsters we refuse to take care of. Those monsters we refuse to fight for. They have decided to pay every one of us back. Like the first person rightly said, all of us, including me, we are the problem of Nigeria. And it is all of us that we work together and change our attitude and mindset and make that country what God made it to be so that we can all enjoy it today and live a better, legit country for our people and our children. That is what I will say for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, you're, you have come up with a very good uh, talk. We will wait for Shuara himself to, to, to come up. He's almost in, you know. Yeah. So you, what you have, uh, if anybody wants to say something to, to what our, with Madam Anne just said, let's unmute. I think uh, Mr. Daniel Adebayo is on, yeah. It's in, Yes, uh, thank you. Good evening, uh, good afternoon to everybody or any hour of the period of the day that you are, wherever you are. Uh, really, I just wanted to know the first thing that uh, I wanted to know if Sowode is, uh, is already here, but as you have said, that is not yet in. I yes. reserve my comment until when he comes in. Mr. Sh uh, would like 
I just wanted to know because I'm uh, about a 10, uh, 10 minutes late before I enter. I was thinking that that Mr. Felix Adefisoye is so so, so, so rare that uh, that is my first question that I wanted to ask. But now that uh, Mr. Shomore is not yet on board, I will reserve my the comment or my question to when he comes in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, he will soon be. We've just spoken with him. He's, uh, he asked for just a few minutes to, to come on board and we can ask him a question. But if you if you have another thing to say to what uh, Mrs. Ann just uh, uh, raised, just raise your hands and we can... You know, Good afternoon, everyone. Right. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Putman. Yeah. And I'm a co-moderator of this program today. Um, I want to use this opportunity to welcome everybody on board. Sure. I live here in Sao Paulo too. Spoken to Mr. Shogu, said he's going to join us in like 10 minutes' time. So, um, I want to appreciate Mrs. Han and the other man that spoke earlier on. Also, I will use this platform to appreciate um, our cabbage of our day room here in Sao Paulo. So, you know, from my from my experience, Experience. I've stayed here in Sao Paulo for more than a year. Been here for years. Six months. I realized that everything we put forward to us back in Nigeria is always about they they try to discriminate us. They, they, it's the name is just back in Nigeria. They use religion. Use um, ethnic and a lot of things to, to, to change the mindset of the people. And you come, please check your realize that problem. we all put the games on our leaders. We are filled with that the leaders are our The leaders, the leaders have their own responsibility, and we followers, they also have our responsibilities. So, in the process whereby the leader fails to carry out their responsibilities, and we followers too, we failed in doing what we are meant to be doing. I mean, there will be no ground for us to. To, to move the nation forward. This is, this is my own point. Because now I'm living with I see egos and I see the Yoruba, I see the way they relate. And I've not seen much of our hosts, but I see ego, I see Yoruba, I see the way they relate, they relate like brothers. But back home, they tell us. The, the ethnic groups, some people are different, some people are not the same. You know? so, Your internet is very bad. I'm going to welcome Mr. Omoyele Shure to come and give us his own um, insight to us about okay. the state of the nation. What is he planning to do? What is he planning to do for the people? Thank you. We need to give him the opportunity because the level of insecurity in Nigeria now. That... Thank you. Uh, my, thank you very much. Uh, my my uh, honourable <laughs> my colleague, uh, my co-coordinator. <laughs> 
Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Everybody, please mute your mute your your All your these system games, so that we can, we can listen to uh, we can uh, listen to Mr. Uh, uh, our guest. Uh, before we we we're gonna make an official uh, opening of the of the program. As you all know that uh, in Nigeria we do it the right way. We start with prayers and we end with prayers. Uh, and we have the three major uh, religion in Nigeria, which is the, the, the Christian religion, the Islamic religion, and the African traditional religion, which is Yoruba or Igbo or whatever traditional religion. This is Nigeria. This is not uh, a separatist group. We are here in, uh, as Nigerians. So I will, uh, I will ask uh, uh, the, the president of NIDO, Naido Brazil chapter, which is, uh, I think, Dr. Yusuf is in here. Uh, uh, Naido has also contributed to this event. We pray for us as a, as a Christian. Oh, or we use uh, 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 if possible, you know, Mr. Yusuf seems to be a Muslim. Then, uh, uh, Mr. Isis can pray for us as a, as a, as a, as a Muslim. <laughs> then Oba Adikunli Adiromu, the, the President of the African Cultural Center, can pray as a Sheshi. Yeah. Let's Mr. Uche pray for us as a Christian. Mr. Uche, Uche Christian. And uh, as a Christian, as an Igbo man, as a Christian. Mr. Yusuf as a Muslim. Then I do remove which is our king uh, to as a uh, shashi. Can we? Can <laughs> Hello? Hello? Okay. Then Uche can start. Yeah. Honorable Uche, please start the, please start the prayer. Honorable Uche. Honorable Uche. We are expecting you. Please give us prayer. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I don't know you said you don't on the dial. Okay, doctor. Yeah. Doctor? Yeah. Yeah. What what you you want something from me? Are you to pray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us prayer now. Doctor, no, give us no, no, prayer. I'm very sorry. I don't like praying. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Please pray for us, Sheshi. Then we can move ahead. Yeah. Okay, let me let me start the prayer then. Okay, mm -hmm. like we always love to say our prayer in Yoruba. You know, that is our ancestor's word. Yeah, we start by saying Olo de Mariba. Olo de Mariba. Olo jo ni iba, olo jo ni bo, olo jo ni ba. Ifa mujuba, ifa mujuba, ifa mujuba. Ashe da mujuba, ashe da mujuba, ashe da mujuba. Araban baba baberi wo mushe batinyo. Ishula lo biro kumwa she batinyo. Ogunla kanye oshi mole lo mile fe jo la she le fi mo mo brabi asho. Oni le kin ole ya de mo awo ya kampi ogbe. A be lay your mo, look on, be lay your mat, that old rope, or the old eating room in the mini. You want you bone bone, eating rope, thin labor, cocoa, cocoa. You want you old at Timber Balak, but Leru. I will lay you obey, let you wet your main, who boom, 
iwo lu be mo lese fi pa oro itata ki ki ori igi awo lu orin edan lu orin amo bi ogan bo go to gan ogun na pan tarada ogun na fajero fajero sun won ogun iran foro gun ile la toro gun ile la o wa nla sowo o la so la o la so la la si gbogbo ki gbogbo wa ko ka la sowo ka la so la ka la so la ka la si gbogbo ki gbogbo wa ka pe ero oko de le o san goluko so la lo kekun oba fi gbo pa segun la dodo la ki yo eri na oba ja ni mo ni ko to pa ni ebi ti kawo pe isoro won so loju orogo san go oluko oso oko ya o oya oriri mo se ba oya oriri mo se ba oya wa dankun da bo ko fi de nu oya dankun da bo ko fi de kun oya wa dankun da bo ko fi de nu ko fi de kun ko fi de gbo gbara igungun nu afefe ma fe afefe afefe buruku lu wa o je ka wa ri ka ri ba ju se ka ronun bi gba o osun o se nge se mo se ba olo ya yin o ta o mi o agba o awa mama fi mo je to sun ebora ma pe ni mo awa mama fi mo je to sun o ebora ma pe ni mo osun ori ye ye o osun ori ye ye o osun ori ye ye o oni bu owo o fi dewe mo o fi da gara ka mo e o se nge se olo ya yin o ta o mi agba o awa mama fi mo je to sun ebora ma pe ni mo osun ko wa fi o mi e agbu e ko wa fi gbe gbu awo awo awa ta wa nbi ile ni ke ka wa ori ba ti ka ronan bi gba orun mi la mu se ba orun mi la adanu eleri mi ebara to jejo ogun akitokun aba ba mi regun ato ti kale ma so we oloko le aye nbi nko ato ba se tonu di orun ni ni ti sawo le oni ara to ero ife ara won ran i won ran nbi ojo mo ti wa saye ojo ni be du orun ifa olokun se ni aje ifa olokun asoro dijo ifa olokun asoro dayo ifa ko wa soro gbugbu ata wa nbi ko so wa ji wa ka so ra ti wa jijo ko so wa si wa ja di ayo lati ni ilo gbugbu ata wa ni iloyin bo ka je ka ko ire oko dele gbugbu won to wa ni nigeria to ngo wa ni owo lowo bayi gbugbu nkan ti gbugbu nkan buru ko ha ko ni ori dede wa e ba wa ka danu o e ba je ka ri ba ti se ka da ka wa ronna bi gba kai da ga oba sise ka wa na gbogbo gba kile ma de wa ko na ma no wa ko de ara ko ma dari ti wa so lati oni lo ase ti wo ifa ase ti wo mi la ase ti wo isu la lu ke se to lo mari o do di ma ase o we thank god for everything we thank our ancestors for making this day uh for making this day possible for us and we hope our uh, comrades uh showere we give us a very nice uh, discussion we welcome him into into this platform you are welcome mr shore thank you very thank you very much oba adikun yare romu thank you very much uh i think uh, we need the prayer from uh, i think mr uche is a bit busy so let mr nicolas i don't know if he's hearing me yes i can hear you mr dinka yes, please pray for us as a christian please Yeah, I will thank you, uh, Mr. Kumba, for the prayer, the spiritual prayer, and uh, we we also pray that uh, the Almighty will give us uh, wisdom and how to proceed on uh, the problem facing our country, and to give us great uh, ideas and strategies we are going to put in place to put our country in order because there's a lot of something going on. And God will give us uh, protection from this very trying period in our country, so that we can come up with uh, the necessary ideas to through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray. Amen. 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 We have a good news in there. Uh, Madam can pray for us. Uh, or, uh, a good news in for us, so we can move ahead. Okay, Akim. Yeah, please, please. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Oh, oh, you are here, Laji. Well, good. Yeah. Please, Hello. Please. Uh, may the Almighty Allah be with every one of us. Amen. May the mercy of Almighty Allah never depart from our all, our country, Nigeria. Amen. Amen. Allah, you are mighty, Rahimi. Alhamdulillah, you are the Nina, the Most Rahimi, Malik, and Medini. Ya kana abdu wa ya kana mustaqim wa hiddina wa sidanta al mustaqim 
سلام تلازينا متعلي جئ المندوب علي وحضا لينا آمين حمس ربك ربي لساة ما يازفون والصلاة والسلام والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين 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 Thank you very much. Go ahead. You're welcome. Kim Akona, thank you very much. Like I said, we have a... Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma. We have a question over here. Ready to listen, to answer, and to speak in the state of the nation. I will employ every member present. We know we all have our different versions. How do I say it? But please let us welcome... Mr. Shewure is with us, is here to listen to us, to address us, to answer our questions, and uh, to tell us his views about the, the present situation in Nigeria and his ambition as an activist and a political uh, aspirant, too. Uh, Mr. Shewure, uh, welcome. We welcome you to Brazil. By the way, because this is a program from Brazil. We are making our, our voices to be heard in Nigeria and around the world. Thank you very much for honoring the invite. Uh, I would also like to, to Mr. Shashiro was not here, I would also like to introduce uh, some of the members. We have uh, my co coordinator, my moderator. Mr. Hama Mata, uh, Mr. Dan Bakari, who has been so fantastic, helpful. Uh, thank you. We thank the Romo. We thank the Medo. We thank the Bermo Dua. We thank uh, everybody here. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Shiwure. I will ask the first question, sir. Uh, uh, this question comes from Mr. from Obadi Kunlade Romu, Oba Oguni Wase, the, the, the president of African Cultural Center here in Brazil. He's asking me to ask you that uh, recently he's been uh, following your, your contributions, principally. Uh, your activism and your uh, uh, closeness to Cheshire and Yoruba culture in the recent years. He said he would like to hear from you. Uh, what are your views right now? Do you think there is still Nigeria, and uh, why actually are you uh, getting more closer to Cheshire in the recent uh, days, years, thereabout? Well, let me um, thank everyone for inviting me. I want to thank uh, the organizers, the moderators. And those who are in attendance, and thank all our people there in Brazil. Um, I, we are talking at a time of uh, uncertainty for the country known as Nigeria. And uh, I'm sure, just like uh, most of us, uh, you hear all the news every day about how fast the country is slowing down. And... Um, it's difficult at this point to even question or blame anyone for taking a position on Nigeria. Uh, when I say that, I mean those who might think that Nigeria should cease to exist. But it's also wrong um, to condemn anyone who feels that Nigeria should be uh, salvaged because it's a country with immense potential. And for those of us who have traveled extensively outside of Nigeria, 
we understand the power of uh, strength of a nation <laughs> as big as Nigeria. On a personal level, and because of personal experiences I've had, I do not think that breaking up Nigeria will solve Nigeria's problem. Or that will solve the problem of humanity here in the place known as Nigeria. And as a result, and because of my Pan-African credentials, I have mostly supported a Nigeria that could play a major role on the continent of Africa. And a Nigeria that could help you know, help us leap into a united Africa. Because if you look at some of the countries that are doing well all over the world today, they are doing well on the basis of strengths. China has over uh, a billion people. India has mm -hmm. over a billion people. America has 350 million people with 50 states and several territories. Brazil, where you are based today, is big and has diversity. And when you look at all these countries, including the European Union, that has pretty much become one nation mm -hmm. by way of integration, yes. you will realize that we stand a chance of getting my own the best my, my out laptop, of my laptop speaker. I think, I think someone who is managing okay, this should I'm help us with. There's a lot of uh, people intruding into the conversation. I think the host should uh, figure out a way to mute anyone who is not uh, speaking directly with due respect. So, so I came to the conclusion that we can make the best out of Nigeria. And I've also looked at it and thought about it and researched it and discovered that Nigeria's problem is not its diversity. Nigeria's problem is leadership. We have some of the worst leaders in the world and they are the cause of our problem. To leave the problem of leadership, completely abandon it and not address it and then start looking for other solutions, okay. short-term solutions, we leave us even in worse conditions than we have found ourselves today. It is the reason why I take the stance I take that we need, before anything else, a revolution. What a revolution we do is put an end to all these shenanigans and serve as a standing lesson against those who have put Nigeria in the condition that it is today and those who might want to do or repeat the situation that Nigeria is today. And I have no doubt that that's the truth. We can go in another direction and start, you know, we can create the smaller republics, right? But I, I, I worry that we will find ourselves in the same position that we're in, even if it's not worse, when we do those things without addressing the problem of leadership. So that would be my intro uh, to, to the meeting today. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shewole. Uh, thank you. So there's a question from which, uh, from uh, Alaji Aquino. And uh, let me see, just a minute. So the question from, uh, I think he has a, he has a reticence. He just, just sent me a message now. He, he wants to know, uh, he has referred me to Ni Nigerian uh, 1999 constitution. Yeah. He's asking you to, to say your view, what do you, what do you Think you think that constitution is anything to go by, even if you don't have a, a election in 2023? Completely, I'm, I'm opposed to 1999 constitution. The 1999 constitution is not a constitution, it was uh, a document put together by the Nigerian military and ram down the throat of the Nigerian people. It has no legitimacy as far as a constitutional document is concerned. There's a process globally recognized 
for making and ascertaining and legitimizing a constitution. It must have the imprimatur of the people. It must include the people who you are making the constitution for. They must be the ones who made the constitution. And the constitution must then go through what they call a referendum before it can be legitimized. All these things were not met as far as the 99 constitution is concerned. So I personally don't believe in the 99 constitution. I don't think it can be amended because you cannot amend an illegitimate document. What needs to happen is for Nigerians to set up their own constitution, come together and put in whatever they want inside the constitution, ratify it by way of a referendum and let it be the question that guides our fears. Not the 1999 constitution Mm. That according to the Minister of uh, Information during that period, his yeah, name is Umodo. He said when they they were going to uh, when they were going to be sw- they were, when they, when they were going to swear in Obasanjo in 1999, they had not printed the constitution. They didn't know where the printer was. How do you call that? A, how do you use that kind of a fake, fraudulent document to govern 200 million people? <laughs> uh, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> thank you very much. We have another question from uh, from Mr. Daniel. <clears throat> Mr. Daniel, can you unmute yourself and please ask a question? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. And thank you very much uh, for being with us, uh, Mr. Omoyele Showore. Well, it thank is you. very good. Yeah, my question, firstly, or it will be on that constitution that you said. Mr. Showore, you have been in this politics, in Nigerian politics for a while. And this Nigerian constitution that we are seeing of 1989 is almost two, uh, 22 years now. You politicians, Nigerian politicians, what are you looking at up to today that this constitution can have not been changed or has been amended up to today that we are, we are having chaos within our country today? Please, can you just... And what is the way forward now? I have... Uh, amendment, and why is it not amended? We, we cannot say that we don't have intelligent people like you in the Nigerian politics up to today. And we are saying so, that we are using the, the same constitution. That is my question. Let me be, Thank you. Let me, be, let me be very clear, right? I have been an activist most of my life. I didn't join partisan politics until 2018, officially. 2019, after the election, I spent five months in detention prison. I mean, DSS. So, and for the last two years, I've been in, uh, under some kind of city arrest. So I don't fit into the profile of I don't an average Nigerian fit politician. into the profile of an average Nigerian politician. What I'm trying to say is this. I have been opposed to this constitution since 1999 when it was created. That's part of the reason why I left Nigeria yeah. in 1999, because I couldn't stand the hypocrisy, the deceits, and the dishonesty that greeted the transition program in 1999. In 1992, just to rewind back a bit, I was one of the people who wanted to, I, I, I tried to participate in a, a, in a people organized sovereign national conference in Lagos. The police came there, sent by Babangida and dispersed everybody. So if you follow my record very well, I've never agreed with the 1999 constitution. If you follow my campaign in 2018 and 2019, I was the first to say that national, the, uh, you can Google it, the 1999 constitution is a fraudulent document. Now everybody is following that line of thought and openly expressing it. I was the first to say it before every other person, the other politicians, as you call them, now started the, having the courage to say that it is. I've never, never accepted it. Same way I've never and would never accept the kind of leadership that we have in Nigeria today. It doesn't matter whether you put a gun to my head or kill me. I will be on record. So where I align with you is that we shouldn't wait anymore. 
It is one lie that have lasted for 22 years, but we don't have to continue this lie going into the future. Sam is not the answer. It is very good. I understand you very clearly. Uh, with your policies that you are uh, your aim of, of bringing Nigeria forward, are you ready, or as a politician, are you wish to work with the opposition party, or do you don't carry any opposition along with you to do the government or to discuss? Two years. We can, we can, well, let's say that. Should we call it a wasted year without constitution? And have you not been talking to some elites among the opposition party or more opposition? We will have to, probably doesn't have the same idea with you in politics that you can carry along so that things can work. Because we know that even at all, you be the president or you be the leader of Nigeria today without the opposition being carried along, little can be done. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for that question. I have worked with a lot of people who are opposed to Nigeria's misrule. That is my background. I've been in opposition to a crazy, mindless, and wicked system of governance in Nigeria for 30 years, starting from military rule to you know, this moron uh, style of government that I call, uh, this moronic style of governance that I call morontocracy. What I'm saying, is that I'm willing to work with anybody. But if the people you call opposition are these PDP guys or APC people, I don't see them as opposition. These are the guys who brought Nigeria to the condition uh, that we're in today. And I find it difficult to relate with a PDP person who was part of 16 years of uh, governance that has kept Nigeria in darkness after spending $16 billion to generate electricity. I don't have respect for them. And I don't know if they have anything to offer. But I'm not opposed to working with anyone who has conscience to lift Nigeria out of the doldrums. Definitely not. But I won't deceive you or anyone who is listening to me today that you can work with all these characters, all these thieves who live in this Abuja. I see them all the time. To bring Nigeria out of uh, poverty, you know, misery or misery because they are the ones responsible for it. And they like Nigeria the way it is now. I, can, I cannot work with them. I don't, I don't think my conscience will let me sit ever with Ibabangida or let me sit with an Obasanjo who claims to be an opposition uh, person today. Because they brought Nigeria to where, where it is today. And I guarantee you that they are not interested in a better Nigeria. They are not interested in the bright future for this country. Never. They will rather perpetuate, manipulate, you know, uh, the country back into the hands of another incompetent leader rather than allow a brilliant person to run the country. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Mr. Daniel, thank you very much for the question. There is uh, one Mr. Chibuzo who has been raising his hands there. Mr. Chibuzo, can you unmute yourself? Good evening. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Chibuza. Uh, actually, uh, I am from the Igbo extraction. I want to thank you all. Um, this is my second time of hearing my would be president. When I look at you, Mr. Sore, I have this, um, this uh, urge, that fire in me that as a youth you are, that you can give Nigeria the best irrespective of the fact that you're from the, uh, you are the Yoruba side, you understand? Well, you are- Sorry, Mr. Chibuzo, can you, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, my name is Ibe Chibuzo. I'm from Igbo. I'm uh, from Igbo. I, well, currently I'm in Turkey. Okay. okay. Currently I'm in Turkey, Istanbul. Okay, see. So, my coming to Istanbul is uh, I run for my I run for my life because where I work, I was hit yesterday by oh. the same full name Melu Melu. In fact, my woman has been crying right there in Abia State. They came to her to to the, to my house. 
a top of the all, all the plants, uh, all the corn I planted. I gave her one strict warning. Please do not say anything. Leave them because of the sake of life. I have no other option. But let me keep it to that. Hello? So, I'm yes, listening. I'm here. I'm well listening. Well okay. listening to you. So, this is my, my first hand experience about all these. Uh, unknown government from wherever making the polity a lawless nation where the police even two of my friends who are policemen are dead in Abia state mm. trying to serve the nation but i don't think that the na nation deserve them because of the current situation i'm so sorry i have to say it because they all put in their strength just the other day they they the chief of army staff died. It's a big loss, but that is how the nation is. How many we, we keep on dying, sacrificing their life for the said nation? At the end of the day, what did they get? Nothing. People like us who had money with us had to leave to find better pasture out here in Istanbul. I know the challenges I'm passing through here in Istanbul because I don't know how to speak Turkish. And they don't even care about your English language. They don't care. If you like, speak from here to, to, to Queen Elizabeth uh, uh, Palace. They don't care. They don't give, they don't care. They are so contented with their, 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 their their language but let me just leave that one to to that my my leader i yes. i want to i have so many questions and i would like to share now your brother sunday idoho i is it his right name Yes, is it his right name? Sunday Bo Edo. Um, am I speaking it correctly? Yes, okay. Okay. Now, and you have Nandekano. Okay. Sunday is Sunday Bo is in the west. Nandekano is in the east. All of them are crying the same. Uh, they have the same flag for a better Nigeria. Now, assuming that tomorrow that you are made the president, are you going to reconcile these two groups? Thank you so much, brother, for the preamble to your story. Um, I personally have been to 30 countries around the world, including Turkey. And I've never met a country elsewhere. And I'm not exaggerating that it's as terrible as Nigeria. You know, I've been to the Caribbean, been to Turkey. I went as far as Australia during the 2018, 2019 election. You know, I've been to some of these West African countries like uh, Ghana, Ethiopia, Kenya, South Africa. No country, Senegal, that I've been to is as terrible as Nigeria. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Now I'm going to your question. You are aware that even before my arrest in 2019, I met Kanu in New York. That's Namdi Kanu. And uh, I was so surprised that uh, the guy really wants Nigeria to work. But in the absence of a Nigeria that works, they want, uh, they want you know, a Biafran nation. Definitely. Yes. This is what is it's the, the call you're seeing everywhere for let's break up, let's go away. It's because people are, people feel choked. They, they're choked by the terrible leadership in this country. They're choked by the, the insensitivity of our leader. They're choked by the injustices that is pervasive everywhere. And it was as if Buhari was designed to come assassinate these terrible conditions. 
in Nigeria. It's as if he was brought to come and inflict pain, suffering, nepotism, favoritism, bigotry, you know, and his murderous ideas about how to handle even the simplest things, such that you can imagine that this guy has no leadership qualities at all, apart from the fact that people said he's suffering from dementia, which I believe to be true. But there's something inherent in him that is bad. Even without dementia, Buhari is a bad human being who doesn't believe in this diversity we are talking about. Bad. So the easiest thing I'll tell you is that I know all these groups. Uh, I know uh, them hello, Shure. Shure, sorry, sorry to cut you short. We, we agree Buhari is bad, but we also yeah. believe that you are part of those that enabled him to power in 2015. You see, this is, I think it should have been treated as a separate question. Just, uh, know, if I ask you, if I ask you now, if I ask you to go and bring me evidence that I supported Buhari in 2015, you will be stammering. No, there, no, there are lots of evidence. Uh, it's there are lots no, of evidence I, out there. I'm, I'm asking you one. Just, just present one where you saw me at a campaign rally, asking you to vote for Buhari. Tell me one. Or where okay, I called okay. you now, personally now, to now, vote for Buhari. Now, See, let me tell you the truth. Eh? Let me tell you the truth. See, it's not about I, telling me. I asked you a direct you. question. No, no, I want to answer your question, uh, Mr. Yeah, Mr. 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 Adebwan. Yeah. He's uh, let, let him finish first with my question. Yeah. Then you can. Okay, all right. I'll wait yeah. for because no you're no uh, yeah. uh, Sorry, uh, so, Mr. Shure, just a minute, please. I will. Yes. I will employ every uh, force to let him speak. Then we can ask our question one after the other, so that that will be. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, so it is the easiest thing is to bring these people together. Is the easiest thing because they are not asking for too much. They just want to have a sense of belonging. The Igbos want to have a sense of belonging. The Yorubas want to have a sense of belonging. They want justice. They want jobs. They want hospitals. They want security. Nobody wants to live in a country where you are in your farm. And somebody shows up with a bunch of cartridges, rape your wife, and when you complain, they kill you. Nobody. There's no place for that in any part of the world. Mm. So, and to have a government that you cannot cry to, the police that does not protect you, or and then blames you for your this kind of predicament. Just like the attorney general said some four or five days ago, comparing spare part sellers with you know full and headsmen who are roaming around. Destroying people's farms, you know, killing and maiming citizens. You understand that at the highest level, these guys are the worst characters that can govern a country. So, the moment you have a president who is who understands these things, who is willing to address them, and they can show good faith, Nigerians will rally around the person. And getting these guys to a table is the easiest thing. Very easy because I know them personally and I know the issues. So I don't even need to, it would take me a week to bring a, a Nam the Kanu to the table. Bring a, or whomever, whomever may be out there who is disenchanted with the Nigerian state, who is disenchanted with the issue of justice. But you can't, you can't be killing, you can't kill Nam the Kanu's people on a daily basis through Operation Python Dance, Operation Dangerous Peace. Operation uh, Crocodile, Operation Lion, Leopard, in a country that people are asking simple questions. You are responding with bullets and rockets and helicopter gunships. Whereas in your own part of the world, in the northern part of the country where there's terrorism, you are unable to respond with equal measure of, uh, of uh, sternness and violence. So you can understand why people are upset and tired of this country. Yeah. Uh, uh, before, thank you, sir, for the answers. Uh, but I, I would like to throw in more. I uh, because I heard you say something about I didn't get much uh, the cost the 1999 constitution. Yes. Then I also I had something about revolution. Yes. Well, um, revolution in this current era, doesn't it speak that with the kind of government we have? No, the, now, question I'm, the, the question I'm asking you is that, are, you, are we not dying? 
<laughs> even without fighting for a revolution. That is no, one. I, no, yeah. A revolu- <laughs> what revolution does is to shorten, you know, whatever we need to do. To, instead of dying for 10 years, we do it in a week. Whomever survives, which I'm sure all of us will, we'll take it from there. You understand? But you don't want to do a revolution. Okay, you're doing your legitimate Biafra agitation. The army is there to kill you on a daily basis. The police is killing you. They kill, they've killed more people in Olu, in Mustad, than would have died in a revolutionary struggle nationwide. So the people who said they didn't want revolution when we were doing NSAS, when we were saying revolution now, they said, no, they don't want revolution. They're the people that the army went and shot and killed at the Lekki Gate. You understand? So you do a revolution, good for you. You don't want to do it, and you are still in need of a revolution. One day you realize that, hopefully, when it's not too late, that revolution will solve the problem. Because it's about leadership. Without taking these guys out of our system, you know, it's just like you have cancer, and they ask you to do an operation and remove the cancerous cells or the place where it started. And you said no. That you prefer to be drinking a book, one day the cancer will kill you now. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, then, then the uh, last have, question. Uh, oh, is, thank you, is, is, uh, Mr. Chibuzo. I think we have to move forward. Thank you very much for your question. And uh, I would like to allow uh, Mrs. Ann from Colorado. I, I would have preferred. I would have preferred the person who asked the question about this thing to let us trash it out, so that it doesn't look like we shut the person down. Okay. Let the person ask yes, the question. Yes, I'm ready to trash it out. Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. Now, see, I remember very well. See, the truth is that mm. I am not a supporter of PDP. Neither am I a supporter of APC. Okay. But yes. then, if at all we have to trust you with power, then we should be able to clarify issues like this, and we should be able to to trust you that you can come out clean, admit your wrongs, and we move on. Now, the truth is that, except if we all want to deceive ourselves, you yeah. used your platform, Sarah Reporters, to pull down President Jonathan, and you used it to enable this devil we have in power today. Well, as you, have, you, have not, you have not, you have not shown me, you have not shown no, me. No, it's not about evidence. Any evidence. It is about evidence. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Not wait. See, look, because it's, 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 all it's, over the wait, 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 wait. You see the times nah. you, you and um, Elrufai and um, this um, former Syrian governor, Nas um, yes. Sanusi, you met at yes. the airport. You were okay. apparently it was too obvious that you are you are an APC sympathizer. But you keep denying. Why you the, 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 the first, the, There was the, even the a time have... you went on the radio interview. Yes. I think someone in the yes. You said yes. that Buari rode on your back to power. Yes. The evidence is too much, and you keep. No, so, so, so wait, 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 power. wait, wait, wait. Can you can you listen to me for a second? And I hope the yes, whole house. Is... Yes. You see, my problem with this kind of, you know, grandiose allegation, is that when things are dishonest and you. I'm just there with honesty. And people say, no, they are not accepting it. How do you then tell me that you have a fair and just mind? You are accusing me of, you just told a lie about me that I went to the airport to meet with l and the Central Bank government without providing the context. What was the context? The cent- I was a reporter in Nigeria. I was traveling in Nigeria as Sahar Reporter's founder. And the central bank government was removed, right? I was at a conference. I left the conference at UBA house in Lagos to go and cover his arrival after his removal. Followed him to Edu's house in Lagos. Interviewed him. The interview is available on YouTube. As a reporter, you know, the biggest event of the day, I covered it. I drove and as I was driving, I was tweeting I didn't hide anything. As soon as I finished the interview, I left the place. The second ever time I met with him was when I went to Kano to campaign in his palace. So for you to sit there with due respect and lie with compulsion that because I covered so the So where I see it. No, wait now, wait. Can you let me finish? Okay, I'll, let wait, me yeah, finish. I'll wait. Let me lie. No, to lie with compulsion, without remorse, that because I did something that my conscience tells me is right, or that I did something that is professionally my job, that because of that, I am part of APC. It's a lie. 
Secondly, you said that I said at the radio station in Badman, which was in 2018, that Buhari rode on our back, the back of the youth and the anger against the PDP regime that time, which is true, that they rode on the back of public anger. They rode on the back of the work that we did to expose corruption and that they have continued the way. It's not a lie. It was a contextual position in public. I've, I've always said that. The same thing happened to Jonathan. Jonathan rode on my back to power because I was reporting on Yara Dua's health. And you don't have a problem with that, I'm sure. You don't accuse me of bringing Jonathan to power. And I think I did more in bringing Jonathan to power than I did for, because I was personally engaged when Yara Dua's wife and the cabal behind him prevented Jonathan from coming to power because he was an Israel man. And, and even as Yara Dua was dying, every day I reported on it. I spoke on it on radio. And I've said this publicly. They have never disputed it. As of last week, I said it openly in, 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 um, in, in, in an interview that Jonathan offered me money to compensate me for working according to him so that he could come to power. I rejected it. They have not denied it. It's been a week since I said that. And it's not the first time. I even mentioned the person who brought the money, Imani Boro. I mentioned the person who he sent to me, uh, uh, who is late now, uh, Ron to Douglas. To come and become a member of his cabinet. If you don't believe, if you if you know that that happened and you don't hold it against me, and you sit down there, my brother, and lie against me, you know that because I was doing my job, that I'm part of APC, and nobody had been able to prove it. The government detained me for five months in 2019. They looked at all my accounts, even charged me for money laundering because they claimed I went to Dubai. When they found out I've never been to Dubai before, they withdrew the charges. They found out that I don't have any shady accounting in my... There are no, I've never received money from anybody. We drew the charges of money laundering. But you sit down there. The injustice you are doing against me is as bad as the injustice the government is doing against me for falsely accusing me of what I've never done before and putting me in prison. If you are president of Nigeria, you are likely to put me in prison on false charges as well. Because you are falsely declaring openly that I work for APC, which is not true. I have said it anywhere. Has any AP, have I ever attended an APC meeting? Have I ever been in a hotel with anybody to discuss anything about Buhari coming to power? Have I ever campaigned for Buhari? Never. You can't provide that evidence. You are now using contextual, I mean, you know, uh, hearsays that they said you are at this meeting. They said sure, at this sure, meeting. this they is said that, you know? So why would sure, you have to lie against me? Why do you have to lie against me? If I believe in courses, my, my brother, right. my brother, my brother, if I believe in courses, I would say that we we'll lay a course on me and you. If anything you are saying, that. but I don't believe in those things because I know they don't work. Otherwise, you are not getting my content right. right. But if you are lying right. against somebody, if you are lying against somebody, and the person has explained to you, and you know it to be untrue, my brother, change your ways. Otherwise, it's going to haunt you in the future. Uh, don't so lie against somebody so simply because. Somebody told you a story that is untrue. No, and you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are not letting me talk. Thank you, Mr. Chi. No, let him finish. I just wanted to. I just wanted to we, make my point. Please let him finish. To, but I'm finish. telling you that you are lying against me. I've you never are, are, campaigned for Buhari. Never no. met Buhari before in my life. Never worked for APC before. Some of some of you lie against me that I that I that I go to Tinubu's house. I've never met Tinubu more than once in my life since 1999. I've never seen Tinubu. I, but all these things are things that you guys lie against people about. But you don't expect me to tell a lie against you, you know, or put you in a, in jeopardy over a lie. It's not fair, my brother. Thank sure, you. you are not you are you are still not getting the point. Thank you very much. The point, what the point, much, what, the point I'm making is this. Let him finish, please. Let him finish, please. I will really let him finish. Yeah, so the point I'm making it. is this. Now, the yeah. point I'm making is this. Now, to be honest with you. Prior to you campaigning in 2019, we 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 all had this belief in you that okay, yeah, she was the guy, she was the man, is this and that fine, and which of us still have it. But my point is this. now when you when you go head to head with of Barry and Jonathan and all those guys that are in power. The truth is that most people will still want to go with you. But my point is this. 
they, these are issues that you have not been able to clarify and you have not been able to admit to. You use how, your how would, how, how would I admit to a lie? How would I admit to a lie? Because Fool. don't you know, you're you're trying, I'm telling you, I'm putting it into your It's not a lie. It's, 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 a lie. it's a lie. It's a lie. If anybody that's listening to you today, you know, wants to believe the lie, they are entitled to believe the lie. It's just like I, I can put out a lie against you too that you went to Brazil carrying drugs, right? And put it out and keep pushing it that you are doing drugs in Brazil. And you want people to believe it and you don't do drugs. You're not selling drugs. You didn't go to Brazil okay. to be selling drugs. Let, you are not talking about that. Yeah, that no, 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 no. Don't forget, don't, don't forget about it. I, what I want to clarify to you is that don't stick with a lie because it's convenient. Because one day it you might be already your not a lie. You know, Use your but I asked you to provide me evidence. See, look, at, Jonathan I, I, was a useless president, no doubt. So, so you want you want me to you want me to have supported Jonathan? And bring no, no. Power. Which one issue? Which one issue did, was overblown on Sahara reporters? Give me one instance. Is it the fact that his wife was stealing money, or that Desiane, his girlfriend, who? Last week, the EFC said they, they took back from her $153 million. Uh, you understand? The thing is that we are living in a country where our own biases, you know, covers our conscience. Otherwise, no, Jonathan should be in prison. If Jonathan was in Brazil, he would be in no prison doubt. today. Yes. So no doubt. is it Jonathan that person that should have been in prison that should have wait, 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 wait. Exactly. Here. Exactly. So, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm without opinion. Is that, person, is that person that should be in prison after his tenure that you want me to apologize for opposing? You want me to apologize to a thief? You want me to apologize to a guy who had barrel of oil sold at $140 per barrel, stole all the money, fitted it, you know, left children who are supposed to have money for their future in penury today. Left the country in a state of insecurity and too much. Stole money, used the money that's meant for all of us for their own personal uh, use. You want me to apologize for opposing the person? Where is our conscience? Where is our conscience? You know, I, I never said so. I never said so. That's what you are insinuating. Jonathan that because I was opposed to Jonathan, because yes, I was opposed to Jonathan's recklessness in government, you want no, me to apologize no, no, for you are, you, are, you are not getting the context I'm coming from. What is your context? Tell me. My context is this. Buari is useless. Jonathan is useless. No doubt. Yes. Now, so we want to, but you want to see apologize this. for... So another, um, another regime so, will come now and they will no, have to apologize to Buhari this, too. What I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. If, if, if truly you want to become a great, a supposed great leader that we, we, we believe you should be, the truth is that when you make a mistake you should you should be bold enough to i'm asking you once again you what is my mistake Shibuzo? you use your the mistake platform to... to enable this power oh, okay because the platform was opposed to jonathan's recklessness and corruption you are upset with that i'm sorry for that no i love the way you, you expose jonathan i love if, if, if you like definitely you, don't I, you I definitely don't what on what you said that if, if you are in a good country, Jonathan ought to be in jail by now. To be honest. Exactly. So, so, so what are we? So who, 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 should, who, should, who should who should now apologize? The only the I'm only not, crime I committed, saying, according saying, to you, no, was no, no. that I was opposed to him and I exposed every corrupt act he was involved in. What you yes, said something? Yes, you said, no, wait, 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 wait. You said something that is very instructive. That you said I over I, it was overblown. That is your. That is your. That that's my crime in your eyes. That I over, the, his corruption was overblown. Where he stole one fifty million, we said it was four hundred. Abi, that's my crime. So, uh, let's Hello, move on. Rita. I don't want other people. Yeah, to thank you, Let's move on. But the truth is that we can not talk about you. Yeah, I think you are trusting power. Yeah, I think it's time we move forward because. Can we have a limited time for a question? And and the not that we cannot move forward, but uh, Mr. Suwore is still allowed the man to talk. That is why if Mr. Suwore stops him, he will stop. But when Mr. Suwore is giving him the chance to talk, no, he's asking a good question. There's no problem. 
But what we are saying, can we have a limited time for any question? Can we please move forward? Can we move forward, please? Can we move that up, please? <laughs> Mr. Deyinka, can I take the floor now? Moderator, where are you? I'm here. Mr. Deyinka, can I please okay, take Mr. the floor? Anna, please, Mr. Anna, please, go on. Ask your question. Mr. Anna, you can go on, please. All right, uh, Mr. Shawara, you are welcome. And I want to say thank, thank you for everything. I mean, everything. You've made me as a person to know about the wickedness and the evil of our oppressor. Before you came in, I said something that we don't have too many tribes in Nigeria, no. We have only two tribes. The tribe of the oppressed and the tribe of the oppressors. And all of us that came into this forum, I want us to have objective mind. If you understand Choware from professional point of view, and you look at his history, you will realize one thing, the same thing, you are accusing him of Jonathan. It's the same thing he has also done to this Buhari you are talking about. And it's the same thing he has done to Obasanjo and Atiku. The truth is this. All these leaders, they came in, not because you were exposed whoever that was supposed to be exposed. They came in because the people themselves we are already tired of the very person we talk about. You see, all this argument, oh, Shoure did it, Shoure did it, is part of the strategy of the oppressed to continue to make us not to be in one voice. And as long as we continue to lay, sit on this platform to hold Shoure accountable for this, we will never and I'm saying it, we will never get what we are looking for. Like I said earlier, I like Shawore is coming from his own angle and his understanding. Unan the Kanotu is coming from his own angle and his understanding. The Arewa is coming from their own angles and understanding. The Igbo's, the Ododua, they are coming out from this, their own angle and understanding. But there is something that is common among all of them if you want to be objective. They are fighting for justice. They are fighting for the blood of the innocent that are being spilled every day. Do you know what it means as a mother to be married for months, for years without no child? You went to Babalawa, you went to Efa, you went to church, you were humiliated and God answered your prayer and you better the child. And your very crow crow eye, that child is being murdered in the order of greediness. And you come here to tell me about what your mother has done wrong and what has he not done wrong. Was Jonathan fair? Was his son clean? They say he that must come to, he that must fight justice must come with a hand of equity. Why are we why are we blindfolded? Do you hear what that woman said? The day that Showare and Co, they were crying for the release of those the, the children they kidnapped in, in Kaduna. The woman said, I know go to school. That is why I sent my child to go to school. Mm. And that child right now is taken away. And I'm not sure if that child will come back. I mm. saw it. I cried. I remember calling Dr. Chidi in, 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 in Canada, and I was crying. And I said to myself, if no one follow me, I will go to Washington. And I will let them know here in America, 
Adia found has rights. If you even, even though you have God, you are lifestyle to hunt here in US. If you don't go to the location you were licensed to hunt, and you went to another location to hunt, you will be arrested and jailed for hunting a bushmeat. How much more a child that a woman carried for nine months is being pushed out on the street, and we are here blaming your for what? Is that our problem? Is that our problem? my brothers and sisters, for how long are we going to push our right in a hot seat and be blaming him for exposing the wickedness of our people? For how long? If you wear Shogoro, right, will you like that? Will you? No. This is, this is, all of us that are blaming him. This is I want to ask us, like what okay. the first speaker said before Shogoro came. Listen. We are all the cause of Nigeria problem. One way or the other, we are the cause. And we, all of us, whether you like it or not, all of us must work together to bring so solution to the problem of our country. Let's stop blaming ourselves. If you want to apologize to you today, we don't stop the corruption that is going on. We don't, we don't stop the killings. With that, with that, if that will not solve it, then let's drop all those trash in a dustbin of forgetfulness. And look at the bleeding of our nation. And let us please work together. Buhari is not good. Donata wasn't better. Ambassador, that monkey was not better. I think that is one mean of is not better. Uh, Ajegudu Jera Tunubu is not better. All of us are supposed to work together. We are here fighting ourselves. Why are we being deceived? For how long are we going to be deceived? Is it because they are not rich or the much? Are you waiting for them to kill your brothers and sisters and cousins at home before you feel the pain? For goodness sake. If you don't feel the pain now, I'm sorry. Like I told my team that look, Nigeria is sitting on a tank bomb. And when the bomb blow, it is all of us. You see those Boko Haram? They are the Amajiris that we deceive in Islamic religion that they should come and practice Amajiri. Now they grow up to become a young adult. And they look at this phone that tells them everything. And they see the injustice that is done to them. Then they become a recruit ground for Boko Haram. The thing is this, what are the root cause of all this problem? I am a social worker by profession. When you want to address something, you identify the problem. You look at the root cause. What is the root cause of all this problem? It is not sure we're right. And let's stop this bullshit. And with your fellow brother, for goodness sake. Do you think it is, it is funny how many of you will leave your daughter and son and wife here in the U.S. where they are safety? And you're going to sit down there in a land that they hate you with passion. How many of you will do it? If you can't do it, let's stop blaming him. He was only doing his professional job. And let's accept it. Let's stop the lies they are telling us. Let's stop doing that. Whoever that is accusing Joe, if you were doing your professional job with integrity and sincerity, true to yourself and true to your maker, how long will you be accepting this bullshit we throw at him every day? Please. Please, let's stop dividing ourselves. It is the strategy. In strength, in strength, in I, unity, I, I, we will overcome these oppressors. They are just minute, but as long as they sow the seed of discord and hatred in our midst, Mrs. 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 the victory is very far. Mrs. Ann, uh, uh, all of us are crying for. This is time, what, what an emotional uh, in fact. Um, Whether we are Odo Dua, 
Uh, whether we are Biafra, whether we are this, if me, I want to even talk, say, from my own tribe, Urobo in Delta State, I will say to you, Yoruba, the Igbos, and the Abu said that you people are selfish because you are the three major tribe of Nigeria. You are the three major tribe of Nigeria. And yet, you people will keep on saying you are marginalized, you are this. What of all that are from other tribes that are not being recognized? Let's be bold and move and fight for this fight and get the victory. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, uh, Mrs. Ang. In fact, you are all uh, at, at, Attention, Mr. The Coordinator. Mr. Mr. Coordinator, please. Can we have a limited time for each fellow that is asking a question or wanted to ask Mr. Yes. Sowore a question? I'm, I'm to, because we have a lot of people hey, please, that please, wanted please. to know something about please. Sowore and his political uh, 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 affairs. Mr. Thank uh, you. Daniel, please uh, listen. Uh, uh, so you can only uh, talk. One after the other, after the other, please. Uh, Mrs. Ann, thank you very much for your it's more like an advice than a question, actually. Uh, we, we thank you very much. And uh, always let us know your full name while you, you ask questions for us, please. Mr. Shiwole, do you have anything to say to that? No, I think she made a submission based on. Arrows. I and um, you know this thing has uh, been part of the very of Nigerian. We attended the University of Lagos. When I was in the University of Lagos, I fought against courtism. I was I was totally against uh, court violence and courtism. The University of Lagos authorities sat one day and said the best way to destroy Shore's name is to claim that he's a member of a court. They couldn't find any court to assign to because I remember I'm, I'm, they, they set up their own court, they call it authority confraternity, and said that I'm the capon of that court, you know. So I left the University of Lagos with People divided over my legacy as an anti cultist as a pro democracy activist because of this lie, you know. And it was completely a lie. But later on, when the university authorities started getting old and leaving, they started confessing to their children that they had to lie against me because I was too much for them to handle. Those of you who were around in 2018, you must have heard of a woman who went online when I was campaigning claiming that she gave me videos of people who were being raped, children who were being raped. And I went and sold the videos to the Lagos state government. A lot of people were scared. They were scared for me. They believed it. They believed it that until later on when I had, luckily enough, I had my you know, transaction evidence on Facebook with her. And I released it and told people, this is the, this is, she reached out to me, I asked people to follow her. To go and videotape what when they got there discovered I was she just wanted to use it to help PDP, Jimmy Aguaje at that time. She just went to distribute food to some people. They asked them, Where where are you? They said this woman who even brought them to the place to film them. And later on, her friend contacted me that she wanted to raise funds with homeless children. And my refusal to use the platforms, our reporters, to promote that fraud was why she was upset with me. So it's important. And the reason why you see that I was a little vehement about this is that you see, I can stand governments lying against me because that's what governments do, they tell lies. But when a fellow citizen look at you in the face and or they look at you, another fellow citizen, person of conscience, and they lie against you outright, oh, you did this, we are sure you did this, we are sure you did this, in a way that they know is not true. They know, and they said to you, the person says to you, it doesn't matter what you say. I'm not going to believe you. I don't, I don't think that is fair because we shouldn't be doing that. That's what the government does to us in Nigeria. They lie against us every day. As we speak now, the Buhari regime is lying against all Igbos that, you know, that they, they want to, they are killing policemen and they are killing people based on those lies. Should I be promoting that? I can't do that because I know what the regime is about. 
to somebody to tell me that I should apologize to a regime that stole the future of Nigeria. I don't even understand how to deal with it sometimes. Sometimes I handle it with grace. Sometimes it makes me lose my mind. How do you apologize to a Jonathan that raised billions of dollars that could have turned Nigeria around and he frittered it away, he stole it, stole the money. They distributed it. They gave one person 3 billion naira to go and pray in Saudi Arabia and he took the money. His wife stole and stole. His girlfriends, you know, they were building mansions. They were buying private jets in this country. If a fellow citizen tells me to apologize to such a person, I'm wondering what is wrong? And all my crimes, in all of this, all my crime is that, oh, you reported everything wrong with the Jonathan regime. But are we not doing the same with the Buhari regime? Didn't I go to prison for five months because of the Buhari regime? Am I not in restriction two years now? I've been restricted to Abuja because of the Buhari regime. Because, and I've never apologized for doing that. Even though they came to me in detention and I should apologize to Buhari, I opted to remain in detention than apologize. You can go and ask. The people who came to me in prison are still alive. So that is, that is my own problem with how these things are framed. Beside that, I don't have a problem with, I know I'm, I'm, I'm an enemy of state, of the state, an enemy of the political, they will do everything, everything. They have the money, you know, to do whatever they can. Some of them will assassinate me if they have a chance tomorrow, based on a lie, you know, and they're selling that lie to enlightened people and enlightened people are repeating the lie. And that's why we are where we are today in Nigeria. Thank you very That's much. That's my response. Thank you very and much. I, I hope we can move on. Thank yeah. you. Uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Bayo Lawal, who also raises hand. Can you unmute yourself and ask a question? Hello. Uh, uh, Mr. Please introduce yourself, your name. Good afternoon. Yeah, this Good afternoon is, uh, from here. So. This is Bayo Lawal uh, from Brazil. I mean, I live in Brazil. And I'm um, a CEO Thank of Mad Consulting Services. Uh, Mr. Sure, it's, all, it's, it's nice to have you here. You know, I didn't know much about you before, but uh, uh, towards that uh, 2018 election, I started uh, reading more about you. And I see you as a material to, uh, to Nigeria. Not, I mean, to be specific, to Yoruba, you can really be of help to, to, to Yoruba. Uh, I will come down to this question someone asked you before about constitution. Because to me, I believe whatever we are discussing here, or we talk about Nigeria, and you have a useless constitution, that means you don't have a country. You understand? So my question, I have a few questions to ask you on that, but I, I, will, I will reduce those questions. The first one is, what, 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 what do you think about this constitution? And you, you contested for the presidency under this same constitution. How did you feel about that? Where do you think we need to go? How do you think we need to sort that issue of constitution? Because without constitution, there is no Nigeria. Yes. Well, thank I'm you so to... much. Yeah, I, I contested under the constitution painfully, painfully. And saying that, I had to say during my, uh, my contest that this constitution is a fraud. I said it on national TV. Everybody was like, ha, ah, how would you say that? But it was my hope, just like Nancy Mandela contested under a quasi-temporary constitution that was partly apartheid constitution so that they could change the constitution of South Africa and the fortune of South Africa forever. So that was, that was my hope, that if Nigerians had voted at that time, my first responsibility in office would have been to change the constitution and have the people come together and create another constitution. Uh, that would include things like 
you know, a referendum for secession if you want to leave the country. I was but, but, interested in, I was interested in a constitution that does not have a bicameral legislative system. You know, Nigeria is wasting money on Senate and the uh, House of Reps for no reason, exactly. you know. Yeah. That exactly. Only, just, only just, one just, of it would have been enough yeah. for me, you know, in which we can even reduce the function of this House of Rep members. We would only have a unicameral legislative system. And the function would be part-time. So that somebody doesn't think that, you know, the House of Rep is a place to go and make money. It will be a place where you make sacrifices to make laws. You know, already the amount of time they spend at the National Assembly, the House, you know, National Assembly to do, is a part-time. It's pretty much, most of the time, they don't even go to work. So these are things that I had set out to do in the first year of coming to office. It would have changed the fortune of Nigeria forever as well. So I had to contest, like I said, painfully. But I, I knew that I had had one opportunity come, I would have fought seriously to change that constitution as a priority. But do you think that would be viable in a situation that you have many northerners in the house, you know? It will, you, it, will revive, it will be viable because we will throw it to the people, you know? I would, look, people make it sound like the entire north is opposed to a better life. It's not true. You, just like you have northern elites, you have southern elites as well, you know? Look, when we discuss Nigeria, people talk about, oh, you know, federalism is... It's not possible because Northerners are opposed to federalism. Go and ask yourself, what about the governor of your state who doesn't allow local government elections in the no, South, who don't allow judicial autonomy? They are all the same. You are talking about terrible leaders. It doesn't matter whether they are council or local government chairman or governor. They, are, they all have the same characteristics. But if the Nigerian people want a different constitution, and some people stand in the way of the constitution, and the public say this is what we want, then those people have to give way. So it's not, it's not as difficult as we think when you have the right kind of leaders in place who can mobilize and motivate the nation to greatness. It is called vision. A vision-driven leader or a mission-driven leader can make a lot of things happen. And that's what has happened to countries that have become great over these years. They always have a leader who has a vision, who has a mission who have integrity to push through the ideas, even when people are opposed to them. Do you think South Africa became, you know, uh, a multicolored or multiracial nation because the whites wanted? No. It was because majority of black, 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 black South Africans fighting for almost 100 years said enough is enough. And those who didn't want apartheid to end, some of them died on the street the day after apartheid was pronounced dead. They said they can't live in a free South Africa. And they went out and they, they became, and some of them were murdered on the street by mobs. So I am not discriminating that that will happen. But this particular group of people we keep mentioning, they are not as powerful as we think, especially when the people, uh, when the power of the people is at play. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, do I have other questions, but I'll, I'll leave the, the floor for other people to, have, to ask their questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Bayalawa. Mr. Shewe, thank you for the good response. We have uh, uh, Alaji Musbao Akwani, who uh, has raised his hands too. Are you there, Alaji? Please unmute yourself. Is Alaji there? Alaji. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can hear you now. Yeah, it's Alaji. Okay. Please introduce yourself yeah. and, and where you're speaking. Yeah, so uh, good afternoon, all. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank our, our guest for asking us, asking for our call to be uh, interviewed today. Uh, my question is, where, where in the first place, I want to thank him for all his efforts in the past. I will not thank God that we have people like him in Nigeria who are still uh, advocating for the right of the people. So if not, it will have been very worse. 
he will simply sit in his office in the United States. I understand it's a US city. And be watching us from far away. But he decided to go to Nigeria to go and join others and lead the struggle for our emancipation. Now, he's been there now for quite some time. He was this yourself. Uh, in prison for the five months. Allergy, please and his rights have been denied him. He cannot move outside Abuja. Sir, it's are you hearing me? Alaji, please introduce yourself, your name, and from where you're speaking, please. Oh, okay, I'm speaking already. I thought, uh, okay, well, well, I'm well. Alaji, uh, Ms. Baudin Akani. Uh, I'm from Salvador, by here. And uh, I, think, I think I've started talking. Okay. Uh, at my, okay, okay. So, Mr. Shogure, to, to be able to understand my, my point, I've appreciated his efforts in the past and that uh, his struggles are recognized. Why not for people like him, since people have been, since people have been worse in Nigeria? So, we thank him for that. People are uh, simply and comfortably sitting in office in the United States, as I understand, it's a U.S. citizen. And uh, watch from far, he decided to go back to Nigeria. He's been imprisoned for about five months. He's been restricted to Abuja. He's been denied right to his family and all that. Uh, my first question to him is, uh, uh, does he want to continue with this type of uh, uh, denial of his rights? Would it be uh, okay for him to find a way and leave the country the way Kanu did and fight from outside instead of being denied his rights and all these uh, uh, hardships he's been going through? I think with the help of the United States government, you should be able to take him out. Or will the United States government put more effort to get him uh, released? and fight from uh, outside, and when things are better, we possibly uh, come back to Nigeria. I'm just worried about his health, the lack of his access to his family, his business, must be suffering, and, and all that. Now, uh, my second question is, uh, uh, the, the way he has spoken today, is like he's a believer in one Nigeria. He thought we should remain as one. Yes. Uh, I'm a big skeptical about that. I, I, I don't really know if there is hope for a united Nigeria with the way things are. With the reactions in the last uh, days or so, when the, the Southern governors came up with some questions of restructuring, and we will see the reaction of the Northerners. It's like they want to maintain the status quo. They don't want things to change, but they believe if uh, you restructure, they will lose privileges, and they don't want to do that. Uh, so many university graduates down the south are suffering. I've never seen a jobless Fulani graduate. Before he goes out of university, pushed out of the university, he already got a job and a very uh, lucrative one uh, for, that, for that matter. Uh, will they be ready to sit down and let us talk? and restructure the way Nigeria will be better. With their reaction now, with, uh, even the Senate president is supposed to be the prime mover and driver of this constitutional uh, amendment. He is opposed to it. So others, senators and governors from the, from the North, but they are comfortable with the way Nigeria is today. But that shouldn't be the future of Nigeria. We are talking of the United uh, Europe, but each country has its own liberty. If they decide to live, they can live like the British did recently. Like the uh, Ireland wants to go, wants to go join the United, uh, want to join the, the European Union. Is it possible to bring the Northerners to the table and let us sit and do the right thing in Nigeria? The idea is uh, losing privilege, but they know. Probably they will, they will be the loser if uh, there is a devolution of power or resources control and uh, not control the civil service apparatus like they do in, in Abuja. You go to some ministry, out of 12 directors, probably you see not within nine others. 
are in top position, controlling everything. So this is my question. Is there still a possibility of bringing the others to the table and sit and let us iron out our differences and get the country moving? Is there any hope of this happening? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for your questions. The first question was about my own personal comfort and if I could opt out of Nigeria somehow so that I could uh, somehow be able to fight from outside. I appreciate that, but you know, there comes a time in the life of a man that you make a choice as to how you want to live your life. Uh, and sometimes the choice can be very, very difficult, very difficult. Uh, and that's what happened in this case. I was the one who brought myself to Nigeria. I flew to Nigeria and I knew the dangers involved because I've done this before. You know, and what you're seeing now is the outcome of that decision. The decision to stay in Nigeria wasn't because, you know, it wasn't because I cannot leave Nigeria. Now you can, there are probably a thousand border outlets in Nigeria. Nigeria has no borders, as I like to say. I can leave anytime I want, but I opted to stay here because there are people who don't have passports, people who don't have a choice to fight from outside. And they're here and they need, they, we all need ourselves. So on that note, I decided that I'm gonna stay. Even if they let me go today, I will visit my family and come back. I'm not running away anymore. I spent 20 years abroad. There's nothing anybody needs to show me anymore. People have to stand and fight for the, uh, for the soul of this country, Nigeria, as long as I still live in it. Even if I don't, even if Nigeria breaks up today, wherever I might find myself, I'll still be a fighter. So I know that wherever we might find ourselves, even if there's a breakup, bad people are going to exist in large numbers there. Because Nigeria of today that you are seeing, and I'm entering into your second question, wasn't the creation of Fulani alone. Fulani has become the buzzword for how to blame leadership because the like, guy who is Nigeria's president today is Fulani. But it was in Nigeria that was governed by Obasanjo for eight years as well. What did they do? The one that was governed by Jonathan, what did they do? It's the same mentality, same attitude. It's just that Buhari's own, you know, his, his own agenda, his bigotry, his nepotism is so cruel and I would say very crude that it's just a rallying point for everybody who is tired of Nigeria. You are in Brazil. I think Brazil is a federal, is a federation as well. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, yes. Is that correct? It's correct. Yes. It's a presidential uh -huh. system. With well, I'm sure. Federation. Yes. Yeah. 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 Been in Brazil, I've been in Brazil twice. I was in Porto. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I went to Porto Alegre at the time. They have some of the best education system in Porto Alegre. And the next time I was in uh, Sao Paulo, right? And I just saw a country that was working. And that's, that's all I, I see. And Brazil is not a country. But Brazil today produces one of the best mid-range jets in the world. They're able to feed their people you know, they are industrializing, even though they have political problems, this political problem is not their biggest problem. That's why you guys are there and we all are comfortable in those places. If you come back to Nigeria today, any one of you, whatever you have achieved in Brazil in eight years, they can destroy it in two months. It doesn't matter where you return to, whether you return to Fulani Lando or you return to Lagos or you return to uh, Abao or you return to uh, Boko, they will destroy it. It's, it's, you know, there's just a low cost system of governance in the country. Terrible leaders. So, you, the, the, the question you then ask is can we get the Fulanis or the Northerners to come to a round table? Well, here is what is going to happen in Nigeria. Anybody doesn't want to come to the round table, the table will go to the person and stay there. And there will be nobody on that table. You understand? So we've reached that point, but I am afraid we've also passed certain stages. 
I think we've passed the stage of reform. There's no amount of reform that can be carried out in Nigeria with this set of leaders that can, that can give Nigeria a fresh list of life. It's not possible. It's not possible for INEC to organize free and fair elections. It's not possible for state electoral commissions to organize free and fair elections. Go and Google, any one of you from your state, go and Google what happened in local government elections in your state yesterday. Or your state, local government too. It's not, it wasn't organized by Fula New. It was organized by Cheyima Kinde. Go and ask about what happened in the Kitty State. There was a by election in the Kitty State three weeks ago, organized by Fire Me. Five people were killed in a state of assembly by election. That one was not organized by Fula New Man, it was organized by Yoruba Boy. Uh, they fired me. Five people, including a policeman, were killed. So there's nationwide problem of leadership. Nationwide. That has nothing to do with tribe in most of the cases. But the Fulani hegemony that Buhari creates has become the poster boy for what is wrong with Nigeria. But even if Buhari is removed today and you bring any of these characters to come and lead Nigeria, they will still do worse. Obasanjo was president of Nigeria for eight years. There's no road from Lagos to his hometown, Ota. I mean, Abeokuta. No, because their priority is not about taking care of the country. It's about taking care of themselves, the political class in the country. So I think, like I said, that people will be forced to dialogue if you want to continue because you have to thank Buhari for it. Buhari pushed Nigeria to the edge, to the cliff. And any one more push like this, it will be, Nigeria it will be over. You have to thank Buhari for that. And whomever thinks that there's privileges being full and will soon find out very soon that that privilege is not watertight. It can disappear at any freaking time. And I, I you know, I understand some of these sentiments, but I also, have done my research and internalized the fact that the situation is not as simple as uh, we sometimes take them. Yes, thank you. So, thank you very much. So what, what, what do you think is the solution now? What, 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 can, what can we do? Because all these countries we are talking about, US, Brazil, but they are very strong institutions that can rise to the official. Uh, look at the of the US when Trump was there. He was insatisfied. He didn't want to leave uh, easily. But the institution, even the Supreme Court, where he nominated yeah. most of the judges, they went against him because the state controls the electoral system. It's, 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 it's not about it's not about institution. It's, it's, it's not about institution alone. It's leadership. If the Supreme Court judges in the US were like our Supreme Court judges. Trump will still be in power, even though they have nice buildings. You understand? It is a judge, right? Who kept me in Abuja? A female judge. She has five kids. Didn't think about how we eat or that I have family. You understand? And she's not a planning judge. Though. She's from the Southeast. The guys that arrested me in Lagos, they are Yoruba people. The, guy, the two guys that maintained my detention for who are in charge of making sure that I don't have any good life in detention, they were Yoruba boys. The guy who led my abduction from the detention in Abuja was a Yoruba man. If people don't have conscience, if people don't have integrity, there's nothing they cannot do, whether they are Yoruba or Flanders. They will do anything. Which we have a lot of bad people. Like, like our mama said the other time, there are two tribes, the tribe of the oppressed <laughs> and the oppressor. And the, the ones, a lot of oppressed people are even worse than the oppressors because they want to become like the oppressors. So they will do anything to get into the circle of oppressors. Some of them don't even have money to pay their children's school fees. But let there be a protest today. It's the same policeman that you are praying for, for his salary, that will come and shoot you. It's the same soldiers who have not been paid that come and shoot you. Why is it that the institutions cannot be, the army institution in Nigeria cannot be like Mali, where there was a protest? And the, the army joined the protest 
And the president of, uh, uh, of, uh, of Mali was deposed. After two weeks, he had stroke. And I think after a month, he died. And Mali is still there. What is my solution, as you ask? It's a revolution. I don't hide it. Even after five months in detention, that was what I was telling them. I said, look, you are wasting your time. If you like, you keep me here for 10 years until Nigeria experiences a revolution. We are not likely going anywhere. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Alaji Akoni, thank you very much for your question. Now we move forward. We have uh, Alaji uh, Akim Akpina, who has also raised his hands here. Uh, can you, uh, Alaji, Alaji Akim, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, oh, Mr. Sorry, sorry, Shibure. Uh, Alaji Akino, please, yeah. let our yeah, question I'm... be very brief so that... Oh, okay, I, I'm, I, I'm good to be uh, snappy, I'm good to be, I'm good to be very, very short, okay? Uh, my question is that, Mr. Shibure, my name is Akim Akim Akino from Sampolo. My question is that, Will you accept the restructuring? And also, what is your take uh, about the 2014 con uh, national conference? That's my two questions. Yes. What, what the question I would throw back to you, I like this. What, what in restructuring do we, what do we need to do by restructuring Nigeria? What, because sometimes when I ask this question, when people say restructuring, I feel like it's a buzzword. I've never gotten you know, one single answer from different sources. This one will say, some people will say to me, it's because the states want to control their resources, right? Some people will say a state police, right? Some people will say they want power devolved to, from the federal to the, to, to the states and local government. So what, do you, what in your own case is the restructuring, the restructuring as you understand it? Oh, oh, so that okay. I, know how to I, I don't know if you watch a... Pastor Bakari last uh, last week uh, summer. There is simply I don't watch, it defined... I don't watch Okay, okay, okay. It 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 defined restructuring in a very simple way that the yeah. pyramid in the north, then uh, what the coco something in the southwest, and the yeah. Kenan in the southeast, and yeah. each of these leaders they use these three resources to develop their own section. I mean their yes. their their region. Yes. That is very simple thing. They, they should allow every regional to, to develop to control their resources. Their, to, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yes. So, very fantastic. But I'll ask you one question. If, if anybody is from Oshun State, if we restructure and Oshun State controls these resources, do you know what people will be selling in Oshun State to survive? No. Exactly. Because they don't have resources as such, you know. They could, your show could be living off of, uh, off of uh, tourism, you understand? Yeah. But because of terrible leaders, uncreative human beings, there's nothing. Are we going to be, are we going to be selling the Ikiri in Austrian states? No, because there's nothing. There's nothing to, there's no resources to fall back upon. Lagos states. It's the only viable state in the south, in the southwest, <laughs> apart from Ondo, apart from Ondo states. Ondo states can't even pay salaries as we speak. So, which resources are we going to fall back upon? So, you go to the southeast. The southeast, what what is there? Maybe there's coal in Enugu, but who is buying coal anymore? You have to go to south south. The south south people can say, yes, we control our resources because we have oil. But very soon, oil is going to dry up as well. So without the kind of creative leaders that can find new means of raising resources or creating revenue for Nigeria will not have even resources to even manage. Any section of Nigeria will be broke as well. Meanwhile, when you have countries like China, Brazil, they are no longer relying on natural resources. They are, rel they are relying on human capital resources. You understand what I'm saying? China relies on its people. The U.S. relies on its people. You know, they develop their people through education and the people in turn create new sources of resources. Software, for example, has brought a lot of money to India. I don't know. I've never heard that India has copper or gold or oil. 
But look at what they have done with software. Look at what they have done with medical tourism because they educated their own people to become great doctors, to become great scientists, computer uh, scientists and, you know, whiz kids. That's, that's what has brought, and, you know, they had uh, Bollywood. That's what is making India proud today. That's what they're relying upon. And then you add that to great leaders. You have unlimited amount of resources. So am I opposed to restructuring so that we can fall back on our No, definitely. I don't think the federal government should have the bulk of resources available to the country. And some people in Abuja, you find a director in Abuja, a director in the ministry, they will have a whole estate. And some states cannot pay salaries because there's too much resources at the center. I agree with that, that we should restructure that so that there will be more resources. But we still need to find people who can manage those resources. Because if you look at what the governors are doing, the state governors are asking for state police. Not because they want to police their state, but because they want to have a grip on the instrument of terror to terrorize their opponents. The same governors are not interested in judicial autonomy. The same governors are not interested in local government autonomy. And these are not full and governors. I'm talking about governors in the South. So we must ensure that when we're asking for these things, we also ask for the right people to manage all these good things we are asking for, because otherwise it will be a waste of our time and resources. We will have the restructuring we need, put more money in the hands of governors. They will be stealing the money and building and buy houses. I even heard now that they go to Brazil uh, to buy houses. They've gone that far. So it's a crazy set of people. Then you are talking about 2014 uh, constitutional conference and the document that came from there. Well, it suffered the same legitimacy in my view. It was non, it was not, not non-inclusive. The government appointed most of the people that went there. And most of them were traditional rulers, old people, the same people that put Nigeria where it is. And the reason Jonathan put together a 2014 constitutional conference is because Jonathan wanted to extend his tenure to six years. The moment he failed, he was the one who had even jettisoned that document. Because the conclusion in 2014. He would have started the process of implementation of that, uh, that outcome if he was interested. But because it was not his natural interest, he jettisoned it, and now they are calling for it. I think we should go to another conference, completely different from what we've had in the past, in view of the situational variables confronting Nigeria today, to create a brand new constitution. Is that how we agree to that constitution or not? Not to be looking for you know, very lazy ways of solving our problems, which is go back, go front. Some people are even talking about 1963 constitution. Which country in the world relies on the past to make progress? Other people are already sending, you know, China just sent a rover to Mars last week, you know, and they're already sending pictures back. You know what we are still doing here? Somebody said that the biggest resource uh, development that has ever come out of Nigeria, say that National Assembly, was uh, the creation of uh, this meat. They call, I forget the name of the meat. It's made by Northern Earth. It's, made, it's very common here in Abuja. This dry meat. Uh, I forget if anybody knows about it. You know, that's what I think. Kilishi is, as according to Nigerian leaders, it's the best thing we have ever made since 1960. <laughs> that's the best invention we have made. Kilishi, <laughs> you know, that pepper, you know, Maybe they will add suya to it <laughs> or jollof rice. <laughs> you know? Oh, oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Shuwe. Uh, we have, uh, would you like to have a, take a snap or we, we move ahead? You... Uh, I just want to ask permission to leave by not later than 7 30. I have another Zoom meeting. Uh, so, please, if you. So what, what's the time in the uh, It's uh, seven eighteen now, so probably in another fifteen minutes. So if you guys don't mind, I'm, I'm I'm glad to come back another time. <laughs> no uh, but, uh, uh, we have a. Uh, please let your question be so, be so, uh, short so that we can all enjoy uh, others too. Uh, I think we have Mr. Nico. Mr. Nico, Nicholas, are you there? Uh, Mr. Uh, Nicholas. Th thank you, Mr. Deinka. Thank you. 
There is a question, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Deinka. And uh, I must thank you for this privilege. And uh, my thanks also goes to Comrade Shore for taking out the time to be with us. And uh, I'm very happy that you took out this time because before this time I had some misgivings about your, your person based on the uh, information I got from third parties. But I think I know differently now because from what you have explained and the person you have explained, I, I feel I will go home or perhaps I'll have a, a different impression of who you are and what you represent in the Nigerian political scene. My question will be very brief and it goes this way. As far as I'm concerned, and I'm a nationalist and I also have the, the conviction that splitting Nigeria is not going to resolve anything. Because when you split people, it is not about splitting them on geographical basis. It is about ideology. And if you don't have the right ideology, nothing changes. So you belong to the intelligentsia. And, I, and if given the opportunity as president of Nigeria, how do you plan to arrange an intelligentsia system that will be able to produce an intellectual content? Because that is what we lack in Nigeria that will be able to put the decisions, the political culture, and the social structure in such a way that we'll be able to come up with something completely different. And the other question is, as a Yoruba man, the Igbo and Yoruba divide is a very difficult situation to come with. And I think this is one of the greatest problems we have in Nigeria. The Hausa hegemony, they have held over these years is based on the weak Igbo Yoruba structure that has been laid in the south part region of Nigeria. How do we hope to bring this disaffection between these two ethnic tribes into harmony so that we can move forward in the south? Well, thank you so, so much for your question. The first question is about how to proper the intellectual you know, value in Nigeria. And I'll tell you the place I'll go to straight. I'll go back to the universities and invest in education, real education. I will do everything I can to attract Nigerians who have left, but who have the intellectual capacity to move this country forward, to come back and start operating from our universities, whereas they can also operate outside of the universities. Because everywhere I've been, regardless of what you think, it is the universities that drives intelli you know, intellectual discourse and intelligence, I mean, intelligent activities of every country. In fact, in the US, every year there's a presidential election. I mean, anytime there's a presidential election, the presidential candidates must go to a university campus for one of their debates. It's compulsory. I don't think it's the law, but it's compulsory. Because you must go and share that intellectual flair before you can be completely trusted. That is lacking in Nigeria. We've abandoned our universities, we have abandoned our educational systems, and we have nothing left. We've had situations where a vice chancellor is chosen, uh, you know, a, a retired military officer was chosen as a vice chancellor to govern Amadou Bello University before. And the same thing is still happening today. The level, the, 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 the intellectual value of the universities have been degraded. You have universities going on strike, you understand? Universities going on strike for nine months in a country like Nigeria. I, I don't. I can't even believe that it, you know, we tolerate it. But there are a lot of things that are intolerable here, you know, I mean, that are tolerated here that are intolerable in other places. So our first place of, our first uh, uh, port of call are the universities, sir. That's, that's my belief. With regards to the Igbo Yoruba unit uh, that you're calling for, well, I think a lot of it is happening. Already, I, I feel like there's a lot of uh, coming together of the oppressed. Maybe it's because the oppression has reached everybody 
uh, here. But I also call your attention to something that is also happening in the North. There's no longer a monolithic North anymore. People in Taraba, Plateau, Benue are also finding their own levels. People in parts of Adamawa, Southern Kaduna, even Nasarawa, places like Gombe. In Gombe recently, there was uh, an attempt to, you know, to install a Christian, uh, you know, Christian leader, and it was frustrated, and the people there protested. So, and there's also something I'm hearing that even the traditional houses are complaining against the dominant culture of the Fulanese. So, I think a lot of things are changing. But with regards to the South, I think we just need to deal with ourselves honestly. Uh, that we don't cover, if we have a bad person in the South, we don't say that because the South now we cover the person up. Or if you have a bad Yoruba, you say because it's Yoruba, you are Yoruba. Or because it's a Joy, you are a Joy, because it's Igbo. You know, the moment we are honest about who our representatives should be, I think that unity will come. I, I don't have any problem with Igbos. Well, I know, like you said, that our parents do, no matter how they hide it, no matter how we hide it. The generations before us, there's no trust between Igbos and Yoruba. They sit behind, you know, uh, be, be, be behind the door, how they feel about themselves. But I think the new generation, uh, a little bit different. You know, with justice, I think there'll be unity of the oppressed against the oppressors. Thank you very much, Mr. Shiwere. Uh, before we... Thank you very much. For the, for thank the you, answer. Mr. Mr. Niko. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, before we ask uh, Dr. Dele Yusuf, who has raised his hand, uh, I would like to, to let uh, Mr. Shiwere, I will, like you mentioned Brazil uh, <laughs> a couple of months ago, that probably they are now coming to Brazil to buy uh, <laughs> their houses or properties. Yeah, yeah I've heard that. Uh, I would like to chip in a bit. We, uh, we have thousands of Nigerians living in Brazil, uh, hard-working Nigerians as well. We've been, we've been trying and uh, contributing our, our part. Uh, you see, in the, in the recent months now, years, as I say, we've been talking, making our opinions known to Nigerian people. We've invited a number of uh, Nigerians, we've interviewed them, saying we are here. We can assure you that uh, if, we, if we notice any irregularities in Brazil, we, we, we definitely <laughs> let the world know about it. So yeah. that's it. Thank you very much for observing. We'll let you know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We, I will uh, uh, allow Mr. Oh, Dr. Dele Yusuf. Sir, are you there? Uh, Dr. Yusuf, Dr. Dele Yusuf? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So, okay. uh, uh, in the first case, I have to welcome Mr. Chure. You know, those of us who have been abroad for many years and somebody has got the courage to go back to our country and be fighting for the benefit of, you know, of the, uh, of the common man. So I have to thank you for that, for that courage. Because some of us, if we don't have that courage and, uh, and we have somebody uh, that is doing that job and we will need more you know people like that you know i've been here for i'm a medical doctor being here for you know uh let's say just to be precise uh more than 35 years wow uh, this year and then how you know i go to nigeria about two or three times a year and contribute my own quota you know in, in my own way but not as you are doing and uh, I thank you, and most of us as well, we thank you for the effort you've been made because we, you know, you know, just, you know, you know I had that, that they, you know, they remove history from our... Uh, from the curriculum, yes, yes. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, because whatever you do in life, history is very, very important. And from my own history, and I've been seeing that you've been working, you've been running all over the places for many years. So that is very, very important. And, you know, and we thank you for that. There is, uh, uh, you know, uh, about, you know, practically you explain, you know, what 
we really wanted to hear, you know. And uh, one of our, one of the speakers, I think, uh, Madam Anne, said something about oppression. Obasanjo John was in prison. When he got to the stage, he become he became an oppressor. Uh, Buhari was in prison. He became an oppressor. So automatically, you know, what we are trying to say is that you are in prison. We don't know what you will become. So what I'm trying with my question is this. Uh, you know, uh, in, a, in a democratic society, we have some bandits. And these bandits, they have their followers anywhere in the whole world. In the United States, in South Africa, in Brazil, or other things. And this is a democracy. How? Because you don't want to talk with the bandits. Because we have the bandits. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. How are you going to make this function? Because this is very, very important. In Brazil, we had a government who was Lula. When he got to the government, the reserve was about $30 billion. He had to work with the bandits to get the government. He got the government, right? Then to govern. He had to work with the bandits because the bandits are very powerful. You know, these guys that are very rich, they are not that they are privileged. I mean, not that they are very intelligent. It's because they were heavy, very close to the treasure of the society. So they were able to make, you know, some money, not that they are very intelligent. Okay, he had to work with these bandits in order to govern, because we have these bandits in the House of Representatives here as well. So he had to work with them so that in order to govern, so in not from there, he was able to ameliorate, to better the condition of life of the African Brazilians. To the extent that he brought the reserve from 30, about, I think, 35 to 40 billion to 380 billion dollars, right? That is why we are not in a mess today with this pandemic. Okay, now, that, Another lady was elected as the president. Now, this lady refused to work with the bandits. You know what they did? She was from the, from the system. Then the bandit came in again. My, now my question is this, because I'm trying to say that you've been walking all over the place. The guys are very powerful. They want to ask you, how are you going to do it? without working with the bandits, because Mandela worked, I mean, uh, Nelson Mandela worked with the bandits to get to power, to make some changes. How are you going to do it? Because this conception should be, you know, I, I, I would like you to expand it on it, because it's very, very difficult. Yeah, thank you very much. One, I wanted to correct the impression about uh, Obasanjo being in prison and becoming an oppressor. Obasanjo was an oppressor before he went to prison. And after prison, he went back to doing what he knows how to do very well. Buhari was an oppressor before he went to prison. After prison, he came back to do what he does very well, which is oppressing people. So nothing changed. It's just like, that's their character. So with regards to your question about, this is a legitimate question, you understand? Our problem is that Nigeria, we have... Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. With, oh yes, our problem is that we have been ruled by bandits our entire life since 1960. You understand? For someone like me, 30, for 30 years now, I have looked at and seen what the bandits can do. We all have seen what banditry can do. If we had the opportunity to work with, to have a government that's half bandits and half good people, we would not be having this conversation we are having. If we give a contract, if we give a contractor a, 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 an opportunity or a contract to construct a road, and he construct the road and chop part of the money, you know, some Nigerians will see, will say that it's fine, right? They won't complain. So, we have tried banditry for sixty years. I know all the bandits in this country by way of being a journalist, being an activist, being a student, being a father, being everything. I know all the bandits. You probably know the bandits too. 
what we are experiencing now is the limit is how we can limit banditry. You understand? If there are people who want to work for the goodness of Nigeria, goodness, I will work with the person. But what I will not do is to open my eyes in good conscience and enter into a system in which we will sustain this darkness in Nigeria. I'm, I'm, since I've been talking to you, we've been using generator. And I'm sure those, those of you in Brazil probably you don't even know what a generator looks like, particularly the doctor. For 35 years, you probably don't know what a generator looks like. It's, it's, it's possible that you do, but it's not as bad as here. This is what banditry can do to any society. We've reached the limits. The only way around this is to turn away from the bandits, chase them out of the system, and you know, have new people, new ideas, you know, and work with whomever then wants to work with us. Not that we should be working for bandits, because Nigeria is a state that is working for banditry. The National Mama Assembly is, is of bandits, you know, the judiciary is made up of bandits, the executive is made up of bandits, the Mama Nigeria Shlo. police is of banditry, the Nigeria army is of banditry, Mama you know, Shlo. this is, you know, if there's a government that can be de defined as a government of bandits, Nigeria is the place to go to Mama look for it. So mm -hmm. this is the reason why going from here, we just have to change course. Doctor, you know, and in Brazil, I would say that as a closing remark, in Brazil, you have a chance to see a good person who wants to work with, you know, a little bit of bandits, and you have now had a chance to also see a government of bandits. Which one would you choose next time? I'm sure you will not go for a Bolosaro. What's the name of uh, that yeah, Bolatin that yeah. is running uh, Brazil? You know, yeah, Buenos Aires. Yeah, Buenos Aires. I, I don't I, even know his name very well. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's your own Buhari. Would you go for a government of that next time? Bolsonaro. Sure uh -huh. I can never pronounce his name. But, you know, but he's bad enough that we know him in Nigeria. You know? Just to so, correct you for something, just correct yeah. for something. Brazil, you are talking about or should that God no resource and all that. In Brazil, they got no resources. The highest uh, 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 their means of uh, 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 income here is that they do export food stuffs, food, yeah, and cultural yes. products. So, exactly. Oshu has got something that could be done to feed Nigeria with the with the land farm. I have look, my brother, I have no problem with that. I'm just saying without creative leaders, yeah. so, so, Oshun so. will still be producing dodo. You understand? <laughs> but if there are leaders who are creative, you know, echo, you will still echo. be who, you, yes, we can be exporting a lot of things. We can be exporting a lot of things. Look, fire me last week. He went and bought, uh, was it three weeks ago? He went and bought some cows. I'm sure they bought them from Brazil or Argentina. The cow got to the airport and uh, escaped from the hatch. You know, they said it's firemen that brought the cow. I'm looking at him and saying, if, are, we, are we crazy? Why are we still importing cows from, you know, and putting them on planes to come to Nigeria? Something that we should have done 30 years ago. I wonder what, I wonder what had a, this ranching problem that is finishing Nigeria now. I will all had a solution to eat. I will all had a ranch in you know, those state. I forget the, I forget the name of the town, you know, those state. Some 40 years ago. But when you have leaders that are not creative, there's nothing you can get from it. They are only there as bandits to eat your resources. So they are not there to create anything. You are talking about Brazil. I, we eat Brazilian banana in America. Cantaloupe, things that are brought from Brazil overnight, we eat it in America. But what is it that Nigeria exports? What do we create apart from Kilishi? Nothing. And sharing oil money. Even the oil that we are making here, brothers, we can't refine them. We have to take them out, refine, and import back. Who cost us? So without getting the leadership right, we can do all the restructuring we need, but we must restructure the brain of these, our leaders, through a revolution. And this is where I stop, uh, my brothers and uh, sisters, and those who have been watching and, and, and listening to me. I would love for us to come back, but because I have another event, 
I will ask your permission to <laughs> take a leave. Thank you very much. If you don't you mind. Much. Thank you yeah, so thank you. much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. So we thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank you, much. Thank you, my best We thank you very much. much. Thank you. We thank you very much, and uh, you. can I assure you that you've uh, with your inter with what you have said today, uh, you've been able to to win more fans in Brazil. You know, uh, and I'm coming to Brazil. I'm coming to Brazil, whether they like it or not. We noticed and 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 to the brother who we had a heated argument, that's that's me for you, you know. I just feel like we should have walked past this whole lie that our people are telling about. There's no need to be lying, you know, to allow people to be lying about. Like Mama said, oh, uh, I said, they want, they want us to be divided. That is your right now. Now must be this one. We, like you know, we are... Now we need to forgive them. Now we need to forgive them. Now we need to forgive them. They should ask for forgiveness. Now my brothers and sisters here. Now my brothers and sisters, they only don't tell lies. When they buy and they can't eat and swallow us, they can't trash and not lie. Let me move forward. Together we stand. United we win this I was begging go. No retreat, no surrender. I'm the revolution now. We don't need to run, no. please, oh. Don't let us run from oppressor. Okay. Revolution now. You don't uh, need to run from oppressor. Let's work for I buy you. Let's take it back. Let's take it back. Take it back now. The time is now. Thank you. Now. Now. Revolution now. 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 Jenny B. Revolution. Now, 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 we come to the end of the <laughs> of the event, and we hope to bring him back some other time. Uh, we thank everybody, we thank every one of you who have been able to join us. We thank Madam and uh, every one of you. Thank you very much. Please, uh, this is Brazil for you. We have more to come. Congratulations, no. congratulations, congratulations for one other successful event. We hope to bring one or another power yeah, Mr. Inca, thank as, you very as much early as for possible. The Congratulations. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. It was a successful um, conference. Congrats, 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 congrats. Thank you very much. So we, uh, this is a nice, uh, uh, a nice Have a nice weekend. Yeah. Conference. Yeah. Revolution now. <laughs> oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and, thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank you. We hope to. to, 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 to we hope to end the meeting now. <laughs> thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you, sir. Thank you for oh, bringing you this to us. Thank you. Oh, 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 this is a lot of me. Come here. Ah, I'm here. 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 Cool Foundation. Please. Hello, uh, thank you. This is Osagi Fadaka. I thank you for coming very, around. Because the words are very yes, important. Give me one minute, prayer, please. Sorry, that's 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 the reason why I have to attend this um, conference. But what that's is right. what is in my mind now? I always talk about the urban nation. I don't want to hear anything. Okay. Uh, who, who, who can who can give what closing prayer there? Hello, sir. 
Hello, sir. Hello. Somebody can give us open prayer. Uh, closing can you prayer. Hear me, sir? I said um, I'm here because of you. Eh? Please, because don't... I didn't want to hear anything Please, about it. Uh, 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 we don't hear. We 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 heard you. Mm -hmm. Sir. Mm -hmm. Can somebody give us a closing prayer, please? Hello? Mr. Degu again now. Okay. Give yeah. us a uh, closing prayer. Yeah. Closing prayer. We thank God for everything. Uh, we started this conference today in peace, and everything went smoothly. We thank God for everything, and uh, may all blessings come over to every one of us. Uh, I will use that opportunity to bring uh, some verses of Ifa as a traditional man. Ifa ni ayo yo go, ayo yo go, ayo yo go ma go ma, adifa fon ron mi la. Ni jo chi baba no re mu yo yora, awata mu yo yora, oro ayo ni yo ma ba wa, oro ba nu je ki ba yo, oro ayo ni yo ma ba gbo gbo wa, we shall all be very happy and all blessings shall come to every one of us. This is what we want. And the, the meeting was so selective that everything was so good. We thank God for the blessings is given to every one of us. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> okay, 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 ok